What's going on, guys? This is Tony Tone, the Chess Salcedo. Guys, today we're going to be talking about how the bishop, the bishop in the chess game moves. I'm doing uh, separate videos for every single piece so you guys can understand how each of them move. Um, so let's go <clears throat> talk about what the bishop is. First of all, these are bishops. This is a bishop. This is a bishop. This is a bishop. This is a bishop. You have two bishops each. <clears throat> you have a light squared bishop which moves diagonally. <clears throat> Excuse me. Bishops only move diagonally. <clears throat> it's important to understand this. The light square bishop, you have two. You have one on the dark squares and one on the light. They only move diagonally on the light squares, and the dark ones only move diagonally on the dark squares. So it, they literally cover the entire board. You guys need to understand this. You'll never have two bishops on the same color. Like two dark squared bishop or two light squared bishops. That will never ever happen. It's always one light, one dark, and one light. So they cover as much ground as possible. Look at all this. So remember, the bishops only move diagonally. If I clear the board here and I put a bishop here, let's say he's standing right here, and then the dark squared bishop, I mean the dark uh the black bishop is on a light square, they'll never run into each other, ever. They'll crisscross the whole board a thousand times. They will never run into each other because they're on different color squares. Now, if you have the exact opposite bishop, who is <clears throat> a dark squared bishop versus a dark square white bishop, they eventually will run into each other and can capture each other. So if this bishop moves here, and it's white's turn. I can go and capture it, boom, and take it off the board. Now I have uh, two bishops. Sorry, this is supposed to be, let's get rid of these. This is a little confusing. <laughs> so, very important you understand that. Um, <clears throat> let me show you a real game on the analysis board. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm just going to make random moves, doesn't matter. Boom. What I did here was, if I go back, if you notice, this pawn moved out of the way up two squares, and I clear the path. I open the path for my light square bishop. Now, the dark square bishop is blocked in and hemmed in by its own pieces, its own pawns. So we continue moving here, then I go here, then he goes here, then I go here. Now, look at this. I open up a path for my dark square bishop. That means that every square that I am able to run through or attack I control. Same with the light square bishop. Now, let's say he takes me. I take him, and now he attacks my pawn here. Look what I did here. I opened up a path for the dark square bishop, and I opened up a path for the light square bishop. Your bishops or any of your pieces are not worth anything if you don't get them out into the field of play. It's no different than if... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, a basketball team, a football team has the majority of their players on the bench, but the opposing team has the quarterback out there, the cornerback, the linemen, the receivers, the running back, everybody's out there. But the other team, you know, most of their guys are on the bench. You're going to lose that game. Those guys need to be developed off of their home squares into the, uh, the field of play to start the battle and fight and, and try to play to win. But uh, bishops are no good. That's the whole main point of that story without range and scope. Think of bishops as a long-range um, uh, sidewander missile on an F-16 fighter. They they are long-range long bombers, just like the queen as well. Um, as long as nobody's in their way, let's say this pawn. Okay, let me see. If I go here, let's say this pawn goes here. I cannot jump over my own pawn. As long as nothing is obstructing it, it can move across the entire board. Just like a queen, just like a rook, and of course the bishops. So if I, let's go over here to the uh, board editor. I clear the board. I put a bishop here, and a bishop here, a bishop here, and a bishop here. If no one's in my way, I can cross that entire board. Look at this. I have the entire length of the board this is when bishops are the most powerful the most potent when you have open positions in the game of chess and 
as you get better at chess and understand it deeper, you'll understand the difference between an open and a closed position. But when there's space to roam around, think about a, a cheetah. You, if you put a cheetah in a cage or a cheetah at home in, in a domestic setting, it has no scope. It has no range. It can't really do anything. It cannot run in the wild because there is no wild. Um, you, you took that away from the cheetah. These are long range. These are cheetahs. And they crisscross the entire board as long as there's no obstruction in, in the way. Now, if there's another piece here, and I happen to be, oops, let me get rid of this guy. Let me put this bishop right there. Oops, this bishop right there. Now, look, <clears throat> I can't go to the square because I can't hop over it. But I can take that rook. Bam, and then he takes me. So understand that bishops are very powerful. Numerically, they are worth three points or three and a half points, 3.5, which is the same as a knight. But bishops are used best when they have an open range to roam through, just like a cheetah, a lion, a gazelle, whatever. Um, you got to give them angles. You got to give them the diagonals, open diagonals, open space, squares. Uh, that's when they're the best. If there's a, a game, let's do a hypothetical game here, and the position is closed. Let's go like this. Move him out of here. I come here. Look at the difference in a good and a bad bishop. Black has a hemmed-in bishop. He cannot move anywhere. He's hemmed in. He's 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 stuck like Chuck in a rut, in a very close position in his uh in his camp. Look at the light square bishop, the black bishop, but the on a light square, it can only go to right here. Why? Because if you let's take this out, if you bring him here, the pawn can eat him. If you bring him here, the pawn can eat him. If you bring him here, the pawn can eat him. It can't go anywhere. It's literally stuck on its own home square or one square up. Conversely, look at the white side. The light square bishop for white, look at all this range. All these squares he owns and controls and can go to freely. Look at the black dark square bishop for the white uh, army. Same thing. He has squares and diagonals to roam. This is how you know the difference between a good piece in chess and a bad piece. I don't care if it's a rook, a knight, a bishop, a queen. Um, this is how you determine. One of the things you're going to determine later as you get better, what makes a good and a bad piece. One that's open and free to roam around is a good piece and active. One that is not constricted, restrained, restrained or in a confined space is a bad piece. It's almost like it's not even on the board. So it's very important, guys, that you understand this. That's how the bishop moves. That's how important they are. And, um, guys, just uh, study, study, study. Watch this video. Hope you like it. And uh, please subscribe. And uh, I'm usually going to try to post at least a couple of videos per week on different uh, topics in chess, not just how the pieces move. Um, and that's it. So I hope you guys have a good one. This is Tony Tone. I am out. Peace.